Last week we were in the Warrumbungle National Park where we got to hike some of the most stunning mountain ranges we've seen on our trip so far. This place is stunning. I honestly can't believe 360 degrees of the most incredible views. Plus, we got to capture the night sky in Australia's first dark sky park. So, if you haven't seen the video yet, or you're into astrophotography, go check it out. Hi, I'm Duncan, and this is Sophie. And this year, we've challenged ourselves to explore this great country of ours. First stop, New South Wales, then on to the tropical north following the sun all the way around Australia. Trying our hand at a heap of things we've never done before and all the while making videos of our adventures. Subscribe and we'll see you on the road. This week we're heading back towards the coast, Crowdy Bay National Park where we meet up with our friends Jock and Bex. We're on the hunt for the elusive pippy, which Strock has assured us makes a perfect bait for beach fishing. Historically unlucky with fishing, will this be the week that turns it all around? Stick around and find out. On our journey back from the coast, the landscape was forever changing, from dry agricultural land to rugged mountain ranges and everything in between. One of the most striking of which was the stark contrast of the blackened tree trunks and the bright green regrowth which gave the landscape an almost Jurassic-like quality. Plus, as Sophie is quick to point out, I love ferns, and apparently, whenever I see them, I can't stop myself from taking a bunch of photos. Usually, with her patiently tapping her foot and getting more and more exasperated and saying something like, I think you've got enough ferns now, babe. You know, something along those lines. To be honest, I do take too many shots of ferns, but here's some more. No, it's a problem, what can I say? <laughs> I like that. It's a long drive towing the van, around seven hours to be precise, and the route takes us over the Great Dividing Range, which is a steep, windy road, which requires us to pull over often and let others pass. Just want to point out that we're not slow drivers, but no one likes to be stuck behind a van. We made it to the bottom. We were a bit nervous about heading down that road. A couple of friends of ours had said they drive over it and they wouldn't fancy going over it with a 20-foot caravan. But we posted online, spoke to a couple of caravanners. They said, probably be fine, just take it slow. And we did, we made it. I can't tell you guys how excited we are for this weekend. We've been looking forward to it for a while now. Meeting up with friends on the road always feels like a mini holiday. If you've ever done an extended trip or spent a long time in a confined space with your partner, I'm sure you'll know what I mean. Carly's Beach is an isolated 15 kilometer stretch of beach with rich red volcanic cliffs on the north. The beach is known for its rough waves and rips and apparently the numerous gutters that hug the shoreline also make it a good spot for fishing. Up early, we head to the beach for low tide, on the hunt for the elusive pippy, which Jock has assured us make the perfect bait for fishing. My track record with a rod and reel is tragic, but perhaps pippies are the answer. It's like a little bubble, and it's actually the tongue of the pippy is poking up trying to get food. And so you want to look at the wave going down, and you see that little thing up. And if you see one, you might see like 20 or 30 or 50. And then when you like run to them, they like, Try and shoot down, like, and then you're trying to grab them. Oh, what are you doing? Oh. Peggy, that's a pippy. Is it? Yeah. I've got two under oh. my feet. Oh, oh grab it, grab it. Oh my god, that is, that is like the best fishing bait that we're gonna get. If they're here, then we could literally just walk this whole line and, and pick them up. Why is 
pippy bait the best? Because uh, it's what it's what the fish are like. It's what the fish are coming in to try and eat. Right. It's what the fish that you're trying to get at that spot are actually coming in to feed on. Smart. We're just gonna open them up and dish it up to them. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen anyone that excited to find pippies. <laughs> I think you're just going to do pippy finding all day. That's it's because it. we've, we've tried like three or four times and, and Becky's found them before, but they've generally been a pretty big fail. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping in the car, we drop the tyre pressure down to 20 psi, which helps stop sand caking up the tread while cruising down the beach. In New South Wales, you need a permit to drive on the beach. And luckily for us, this was the furthest beach within the same zone for the permit we'd already bought back at Soundbar. Yeah, head along Kylie Beach, yeah. look for a spot for Jock to put on his masterclass in teaching everyone how to fish. Yeah. And if and you don't catch a fish, it's Jock's fault? Yep. Uh, it's all Jock's fault. You, uh, and if we do catch a fish, it's not Jock's. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the teacher's fault if you don't catch fish, isn't that right, Jock? Yeah, that's it. Why we picked this spot, particularly out of the whole beach? And absolutely no reason. No? <laughs> Potluck, okay. Potluck. You said it with so much authority that we had to stop here. And <laughs> Otherwise, we were just going to keep driving for ages. <laughs> Got them. Let's give it a shot. See how we go. I really fancy our chances here. <laughs> pretty windy and it's pretty bloody cold. How many have you caught? Oh, you know, 10, 20. I lose count. <laughs> After an hour or so getting blasted by the onshore winds, the girls had finally had enough. So we headed to a different spot, which is a bit more protected and about six degrees warmer. Yay! Woo! The smallest fish in the river! It is the smallest one. Flathead in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I love a small fish. <laughs> I think Talk, that was so cute. <laughs> oh my god, it's cute. You love a small one. In Tarzan, John Corey saw one too. Can you Oh, he's cute. He's so cute right now. I'm looking at after catching some of the smallest fish I've ever seen outside of a fish tank, I decided to give up on this rod and reel business and jump in for a quick rock spear, see if I couldn't catch us some lunch. in my comfort zone and under the water where I can actually see the fish, I'd resign myself to this just being another successful snorkeling trip, which is kind of how I describe any spearing session where I don't catch anything. After taking a couple of pot shots at some brim, I finally hit a blackfish between two rocks. Blackfish, or Lutterick, grow up to about 30 centimetres long and are known for being super tasty. After filleting them up and cooking them on the rocks, I can attest to this. Super tasty fish and you can't get much fresher than that. Hitting up the beach again, we found the perfect spot for a fire and a few drinks to finish off the weekend. Weekends like this have made us realise just how full on working and travelling full time has been so far, and how important it is to take weekends like this with friends to take a breath and relax. Join us in part two where we explore the epic sand dunes of Killick Beach. 
we catch our first sunrise of the trip and return at sunset with a heap of prawns to cook up as the sun goes down. See you next time.